What's up, everyone? Dr. Michael Moeller here, and today I want to talk about MK677 Ibutamorin. Uh, if you've tried this before, if you've used it, please leave a comment below. I would love to hear how it affected you, uh, some of the benefits, maybe some side effects. Um, yeah, and anything else you're experiencing out there as far as any other um, optimal optimization therapies as far as IV therapy, maybe peptides, hormones, all that good stuff. I like to keep up and hear what's going on out there. But today I'm going to give my spiel on MK677, how I've used it in my clinical practice and how I've used it on myself. So MK677 is an agonist of the growth hormone secretagogue receptor. Basically, that means that when you take it, it goes into your brain and tells your body to produce growth hormone. This is the same receptor that ghrelin works on. That's why MK677 has been shown and does give you, uh, make you hungry because that's what ghrelin is. Ghrelin's a hormone that makes you hungry. One thing to understand about growth hormone and insulin is that insulin is released when you have high amounts of blood sugar and it's telling your body to store it. Growth hormone's job is often it goes up when you're fasted because growth hormone's job is to actually increase your blood glucose levels. Uh, it actually spares it from going into your muscles, so your you know your red blood cells and your brain can use the uh, the sugars. So one thing you want to be cautious about is if you are say you're eating some sugar, you're eating carbs, and then you were to take a growth hormone secretagogue, they're probably not gonna they're probably not gonna work that well. And I would assume that actually the insulin would probably shut off the growth the growth hormone release. And that's one of the key components of actually uh, ketogenic diets is staying away from things that will release insulin. Uh, so yeah, like I said, uh, MK677 is going to stimulate the secretion of growth hormone from the pituitary, and then that will increase IGF-1 because growth hormone goes down into the liver and turns into IGF-1. What we see as far as the research is that it does get your growth hormone and IGF-1 to optimal levels. Now again, this isn't taking actual growth hormone, it's having your body produce more growth hormone. And there are plenty of benefits to having optimal IGF-1 and optimal growth hormone levels. For instance, optimal IGF-1 levels are actually increase your insulin sensitivity, which help with blood sugar regulation. Now, one thing that has been noticed from the MK677 compared to some of the other growth hormone secretagogues, so this is working on the same receptor as GHRP2, GHRP6, amplomorlin. Um, but the other ones don't really show as much as they, they actually are a little more beneficial for losing uh, belly fat for, or just using adipose in general. MK677 hasn't shown a whole lot of benefit as far as losing uh, uh, fat. But what is an advantage of this is that you can take it uh, orally or the other ones you, really, you, you want to be taking them through an injection. That's with bioavailabilities. Uh, from what I've seen too, MK677 half-life about four to six hours. Okay, see, so why would we use these uh, growth hormone secretagogues? Well, to get your IGF-1 and your growth hormone optimal. When guys have higher amounts of IGF-1 and growth hormone, it overall decreased chance for death. Very similar to testosterone that as we age, these levels drop. Um, that can be hard on your heart and your memory. So higher IGF-1 helps with your heart health, helps with your, your memory and learning, increase in muscle mass and recovery. Uh, it's really good. Like uh, BPC-157, pretty sure it even upregulates growth hormone receptors. So taking like BPC-157 with these growth hormone analogs or receptor agonists are uh, be a great idea. Uh, I'm not giving medical advice though. I'm saying for my patients and after I've evaluated them to make sure that it's a good idea. Uh, I do think one of the cool things about MK677 is it does stimulate uh, hunger. So if you have people that are kind of wasting away, I had a patient who had stomach ulcers. I put them on oral BPC-157 and MK677 to help them gain weight back. And also the MK677, I've noticed it, a lot of my patients have noticed it's just better quality of sleep. Uh, growth hormone is also very important for the regeneration of nerves. So side effect wise, there are some studies showing that it plays with your cortisol and prolactin levels, but everything I saw and even in the paper showed that it really wasn't clinically significant as far as how much that's altering the uh, cortisol and prolactin levels. And then usually after about two weeks of use, it balances out. So if you have a morning cortisol level at 15 with the MK677, it might alter it either way by increasing it to like 17, which is 10 to 20%, which hard, hard to tell if that's clinically significant and it's kind of a risk versus gain 
uh, at that point. Also messing with the insulin resistance, maybe at six weeks, it seems like it's messing with the sugar levels a little bit, but often by 24 weeks is balancing out. If the MK677 helps you to put on more muscle mass, that will increase your insulin sensitivity and also increase your overall metabolic rate because more muscle means a bigger engine. You know, you go from a V6 to a V8, you're going to burn more calories just basically walking around. Okay, so how do we want to use this? Okay, how I use it in my patients, again, I'm not telling you how to use it, uh, 25 milligrams on empty stomach away from sugar at bed, kind of like what I talked about earlier. If you're having a bunch of carbs and you're trying to activate your growth hormone release, you're gonna, it's probably not going to be optimal. So I take it before bed. I recommend my, my patients to take it before bed. I do have one patient that he does a lot of intermittent fasting. So he doesn't eat till anywhere from noon to, to, to two. So he actually takes it in the morning and he feels like he really notices its benefit. And one of the studies actually showed uh, better levels, uh, better and increase, uh, uh, a more optimal increase in levels using it in the morning. Now, Growth hormone is usually at its highest in the first 90 minutes, your first REM cycle of sleep. So to me, it actually makes more sense to take it right before bed. But who knows as far as, as, far as with the, uh, the peak level concentrations might be a little bit later. So, but growth hormone really helps with sleep. So taking it will help, uh, help you get some good sleep. Contraindications, don't really want to be on any of the growth hormone analogs if you have cancer or tumors because it's going to help them grow. Uh, pregnant or breastfeeding, just too much controversial stuff going on there. I don't really know what to do about it, so just stay away. Uh, thyroid, I, I put this up here because if we're messing with prolactin and cortisol levels, it's going to be messing with all your hormonal levels in general. So if you're having thyroid problems, probably stay away if you're on corticosteroids, diabetes, and then allergies. Uh, one thing that I, I forgot to mention with IGF-1 levels you know, making them optimal, there does seem to be a bit of a bell curve. I talked earlier, it's like, this is an actual growth hormone. This is having your body produce optimal levels. And there are some studies showing that really low levels increases your chance for diabetes, but also really high levels. I believe it was like 400 milligrams per deciliter. So on the really high levels. And that's why, to me, these are a lot safer than doing actual growth hormone and way cheaper. So linked a couple of studies here. You can kind of go and look at them. I'll, I'll get better at, at linking more studies. But, you know, at the end of the day, guys, if you're going to be doing these things, make sure you're getting your peptides from a, a reputable, uh, a, a good resource because a lot of the stuff online is bunk and you're injecting who, who knows what or taking who knows what. Uh, and also it's fun, you know, get labs, make sure this stuff's working, find a doctor that knows what they're doing. Uh, so good. If you, you know, wrapping things up, if you like this stuff, hit me, uh, you know, hit a subscribe button for me. If you like it, give it a like, share. And again, I really like hearing feedback about how these things are, how people are using them out there. So leave some comments and, and fill me in on what you guys have been experiencing out there. All righty. So you guys have a good one.